GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. So, Fat Man. Ah, sleepy time. Really? Hi. Really? That's not what you said last night? Mm, Sasha. Oh, we'll talk about that on the wrestling show. This is Sleazy. Sleepy time. What a wonderful opening to a wonderful show. Uh, today we're going to talk about while Fat Man naps and I believe is jerking off in his sleep about Sasha Banks. We're going to talk about Sasha. the one night where WWE barely gets extreme. Now to take real sleeping pills. Really? Yes. Okay, well. Oh, boy. Yeah, let's talk about Extreme Rules. Why not? So, this was the first show we've watched together in a while that wasn't a, like a WrestleMania. Because somebody actually has Sundays off. Hang on. Hang on. We watched Hell in the Cell together, you fucker. When was that, though? June. Yeah, so. Three months. Four months ago? Three months ago? Yeah. yeah, it's 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 been long enough. But yeah, we so obviously we had we didn't have to rewatch it as we usually do. Yay. And my ratings are gonna be just as off the wall as they usually are. Yay. Oh shit. So look at all the research I did. I don't even have cat and star rings. What? I got them. I get them right now. God damn it. Sleazy, you're such an asshole. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sleazy, did you watch the pre-show? Uh, yeah. That's a I, lie. I did not. You a lie. That's a lie. You did. Because we were talking about how the English and Spanish commentary were fusing together, creating some language that hasn't existed before. It's Spanglish. Like they, they talk about in Rey Mysterio's uh, theme. Oh, is that what it was? Yes. I was so confused. I didn't know what to say. Well, it was Liv Morgan versus Carmella. Oh, and, and one of the other things was I didn't know any of the matches. No, he didn't really know any of the matches. That, he's not lying about it. Yeah, I, I legit only knew about one, and that was mainly because I accidentally found out about it. So I was literally going through this show blind. I mean, he really was because he wasn't wearing his glasses. Also true. But yeah, um, I did end up watching the pre-show kind of okay. It, 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 it. Go ahead, say it. It wasn't bad. It wasn't a, considering it was Liv Morgan versus Carmella, it wasn't bad. And Carmella was looking fine. And Liv Morgan. So, Liv Morgan is not a bad looking woman at all. No. But then Carmella comes out and I'm all like, okay. Um, I know who I'm rooting for. <laughs> Liv Morgan looks kind of, I want to say ugly next to her, but I'm like, god damn. I mean, yeah. I Liv keep it a star and three quarters. I mean, oh, wow. the commentary really it, commentary really took away from the match. It was really distracting. You know, this is all you can really focus on. Yeah. So it really wasn't on them. It was the production's fault or not having their shit together for the first, for the pre show and for the first bit of the, the main show. Yeah, I gave it two stars, but pretty much for the same reason. Uh, Liv Morgan channeling her inner DX with her gear, but otherwise. Course, like the theme all night. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I thought, I found that kind of weird, but whatever. Is it a down low? Triple H is actually dead and nobody wanted to say anything? Sure, why not? Let's go with that. Okay. So, yeah. 
main show proper? No, we we need to talk about something that happened on the pre-show. What's that? Why we have the first match? So main show proper? No, it happened on the pre-show. So main show proper? No, it happened on the pre-show. So main show proper because fuck you. WWE title not even in the match. No, said it totally wrong. Um, so on the pre-show, <laughs> what a fucking ridiculous. Now we're gonna talk about the actual match in a moment, but this is one of the fucking stupidest ways to start a match or to set up a match. Okay, so Omos or Omas and Styles, style and profile come out backstage segment because who was it, Kayla or the other one? The other one. The other one. We're waiting for the New Day to show up. And they get all pissy because the New Day come in and strut around, I guess. And then Lashley attacks E, which means AJ Styles and Omos obviously have to attack the rest of the New Day because there's a fight and they need to be in it. And that turns into yeah. our opening match. The fuck? The New Day versus Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and Omos. 18 minutes and 15 seconds. Despite how stupid the build-up was, this match was really fucking great. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. This, um, was, this was Ken a great it, start. Go ahead. Ken gave it three and a half. I gave it four. Um, I go, that was a great tag team match for being thrown together 20 minutes before. Um, we talked about how I thought Big E was going to pin AJ Styles. But Big E and Lashley, um, but it makes sense because Lashley is having his rematch right now as we speak, apparently. And I don't know. I got Monday Night Football on. Because <laughs> um, no one cares. And if there's the draft starting Friday anyway, why not give Big E another Hang one? Hang on one second. Champion? Okay. One second. She seems okay. You want to come in here? You want to find that? What a goddamn dog. Wiggles! Michelle was on the the bike, and yeah. she apparently got close to the bike's pedals. And got hit by... Face. Yeah. <laughs> She's a bobo dog. She is a bobo dog. So I heard a whimper. I decided to take it into myself. Monday Night Football on that screen, I got raw going on the tablet. How about that? Okay. Well, is anything actually happening? It's Biggie versus Last Year for the Ruby Tiger. <laughs> It uh, so, okay. by the way, okay, let's start off. Um, let's do the main show. So, that leads to the new day versus Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and Omas. 18 minutes, or sorry, yeah, 18 minutes and 15 seconds. Ken gave it three and a half. I gave it four. Um, this, <laughs> it was a great tag team match for me and Zorgia tournaments before. Uh, I didn't see Biggie winning, but I mean, or, or sorry, I didn't see Biggie pinning Lashley. Of course. Sorry, I just got a thing on top of the um, YouTube TV that said, as I'm watching Raw, and it said, YouTube TV is having a dispute with NBC Universal. <laughs> so they may be dropping USA, Sci Fi, NBC, oh. NBCSN. MB- I mean, if it's a day that ends in Y, somebody's got to be shooting for money. Got it. So you might be losing. What you're watching now? <laughs> so I really won't be watching Raw now. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, God. So anyway, back to this for the third time. Um, but Big E pinning Lashley makes sense because if the draft's coming up, they might as well have Big E pin a former champion. Yeah, especially if they're going to do it one more time on Raw, which is happening right now as we speak. Right. Um, so. I actually split the difference between the two of you. I gave it three and three quarters. Um, I thought it was a phenomenal way to start the show, despite it. Once again, you're absolutely right. Literally thrown together. I'm not hugely happy that the WWE champion is in a six man to open a show. But that being said, this is great. This was a great match. Um, it shocked the shit out of me that he beat Lashley again. I, I really do believe that. Um, I, I was going to see either Lashley beating like Kofi or 
Creed or um, E pinning like AJ or something. I did not expect the two major stars to be pinning each other in any form. So, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Uh, so moving on. So we, so yo, yo dog, I heard you like tag team matches. Oh God. Smackdown tag team championship. Yo souls are playing against the street puppets. 13 minutes, 45 seconds. Can't do this. Three and three quarters. Ryan, you're the wit. Oh, yeah. Uh, I fucked it up two ways. I call him the woman's dress. I was going to call him the woman's dressing. Um, it's habit. Tag team wrestling. No, he's no. Fuck that motherfucker. Um, I gave it four. I thought it was a great match. Um, way better than I thought it would be. I don't understand why I was kind of like, eh, for this match going in, but it exceeded my expectations. You forget how good of a, a tag team the Street Profits are because they were, I don't want to say they're a comedy tag team, but they're definitely not a tag team that were really, truly serious wrestlers, in my opinion, at least. So that kind of makes sense. I I wasn't as I mean it. I thought it was a three and a half star match. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad. It was a great match. I just don't think it was as good as the uh, six man th- that started off. Right. I get the same thing. So okay, moving on. Raw Women's Championship. Char- Charlotte Flair defends against Ale- Alexa. Alexa Bliss. Eleven minutes twenty five seconds. Can gave this three and a quarter. Sleazy, let me get this right. You're the tag team wrestling? No. Yeah. Wait. Close enough. Okay. okay. Close enough. I am the tag team wrestling enf- enthusiast. Um, It was a good match up into the finish-ish. I was not really... A, the finish kind of left me kind of dry. But other than that, it wasn't a bad match up to that point. I, I Once again, it wasn't as good as the previous two matches, but it still wasn't bad. Um, I give it three and a half, same as the tag match, but I think it was just like a, a little tiny half step down because of that finish. Okay. I gave it three and now they're throwing out the WWE title match because the Hurt Business and New Day are fighting. It's great. Yay. Um, I gave it three. I mean, you said it, uh, it was good, but it was a bit one-sided. It was pretty much there for the post match, mm-hmm. and there are now I read rumors right before we went on the air that oh, either tonight on Raw or maybe last night was going to be Alexa Bliss's last TV appearance for a few months. Don't understand why. I think they're just trying to reinvent the character or something like that. And I said to you last night where the end game was to the pure character. I didn't think there was going to be one. So maybe this is maybe this is it. Um, I think her character work has been really good, but god damn it, give her something that will melt in her mouth like my not an Alka Seltzer put it this way. Yeah, that didn't work. Yeah, didn't the thing work. was huge too. So I mean, you couldn't you couldn't not conceal it. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. It, whatever they tried a spot and it failed. It wouldn't be the first time. No, won't be the last. Yeah. But just watch AEW. Just watch but anyway. Wow. Uh, or actually, a better segue was just watch the next match. Yo, dog. I heard you like triple threat matches. For the United States Championship, Damian Priest defends against Shameless and Jeff Harvey. 13 minutes, 25 seconds. Can't gave us three and a half. Okay, he's an overrating piece of shit. Botchfest City. They were like the three of them. We're wrestling three different matches. Yeah, that that's a good way of putting it. Um, I it was strange. It was really strange. And, and normally, I I do the normal bitching. Oh, one gets thrown out and the other two wrestle. No, it truly felt like three different fucking matches here. Um, multiple sp- uh, spots got blown. Um, Priest fucking trips and falls during a major spot of the match with Sheamus. Um, Jeff Hardy taps out, but oops, didn't. Um, oh God, it, it was a mess. The dragon sleeper spot. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> they tried to cover it up. I get why they were doing it, but come on. Oh, and 
Uh, apparently, um, who was it? Who took it? Was it Priest? It might have been Priest. Took a, a twist of fate like it was a stunner. It was, it, this was all a mess. And to have Priest win with a roll up of fucking death. Are you fucking kidding me? Nobody looked good at the end of this. Um, but at least Priest came out on top. So we can probably move on from this. I hope. I hope. Yeah, you wish. Um, of course, visual gags on an audio podcast also work, you know. Ah, <laughs> yeah, it was fucking bad. I gave him one and a half. Like, oh, you're fucking more pissed about it. Okay. Yeah. So, so was this? No, it must have been. No, it, I think it was around this time. It might have been before this match. They had a promo of Big E putting over what you're watching now, or was watching the Raw match between. Him and Lashley for the WWE title. Was it before here or after? It was somewhere in this. It was somewhere around here. And I thought it was a waste of time, honestly. You know, whatever. You you can't even book the fucking six man to make it matter. So now we got to push Raw? Really? Okay, whatever. Yeah. It's a, a, it's a great example of them not knowing. It's them constantly working towards the next feud rather than actually finishing feuds. Remember when a, a pay-per-view meant that it was the the finish to the feud? The finish to the angle? No, it's got to be constant because there's so many goddamn pay-per-views. So much so that nothing is ever finished. We're going to have three more matches of Priest versus uh, fucking Sheamus. We're going to at least see one more match of fucking... Um, uh, Street Profits versus the Usos. That's guaranteed to happen. Bianca's probably going to face either Becky Lynch or Sasha or have a triple threat because we have to keep that going. And let's, in fact, let's talk about that. SmackDown Women's Championship. Becky Lynch defends against <sighs> not Sasha Banks. Okay. But Bianca Belair. This match only went 16 minutes and 30 seconds. And you and I thought it went 30. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like it went. It felt like it went really long. Uh, Ken gave us three and a half. He's an overrating piece of shit. I gave it. Um, really? I thought it was. I thought it was good, but way too long. And at least it seemed it was. But the best part of the match. Ah, uh, here we the, go. Was the end of the match when Sasha Banks and saved us all from. That's a, a good match, but whatever. <laughs> like, she's back. It was the best part of the show. 100%. This match is 40 stars. Would have been a thousand in the Tokyo Dome only because Sasha Banks was there. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say. My, my bay is back and I'm happy. No, seriously, it was a solid match. The DQ finish, well, kind of like, and it did make sense to where, you know, Sasha didn't wrestle Bianca in SummerSlam. Becky Lynch came up, so and Sasha Banks kind of came back and destroyed both of them. So it made sense to further along the story. <laughs> but well, was it? Yeah. Well, here's the thing: is that who does this help? Who does this really help? Doesn't help Lynch because technically she lost the match. Lost. Doesn't help Bill Air because she got squashed by Becky, and now. Really doesn't have a win over her still. But she didn't get squashed by them. This time. But she couldn't even get the job done. Well, that was only because Sasha Banks came down. She was going for her finisher. So, <clears throat> does this help Sasha? No. It helps nobody. No, you're wrong. It, I think the only person it doesn't help is Becky. It doesn't help Bianca either. She I needed... Know. Well... You basically she made her look like a fucking goober. You know she will, You know, no, no, it doesn't make her look like a goober at all. Because she's never going to win that title back. Never, ever, ever. Not in this ever, feud. Ever, ever. Not in this current feud. In this current iteration. No, she's not. Because you guarantee it's going to be Banks either pinning, or most likely pinning fucking Bel Air to take the title back. They're going to do a triple threat. It's going to be a fucking okay match. Probably a good match, depending on 
how much you like triple threat matches. But the reality I is, I don't think that's what's going to happen. I guarantee you that's what's going to happen. I don't think so. As much of a Sasha fan I am, I think Becky is going to either going to do or one thing's or the uh, Balor is going to hit her finish and you know what's going to happen. He's going to throw out her wing and steal the victory. They're going to try to protect her as much as they possibly can now as to have either win. <laughs> In <laughs> so other both, words, so it's not going to help her, is it? But it, it, it's, it's not, not going to hurt her. Yes, it is. No, She's not. now. How many credible cha- challengers has she had? Credible? Yeah. Bailey. That's it. So she's awesome. had one decent challenger. That's it. And when it came to anybody else stepping up, she's now second tier. Remember, that, there is a draft coming, bro. Yeah, they should probably find some secondary title to put on Bianca then. Because she ain't ever touching the top titles for a while. I think they're going to throw her with Charlotte. I think she's going to Raw. So she can lose to Charlotte a bunch of times instead? Okay. No, she's going to win the title and Charlotte's going to then destroy her. <laughs> The reality is, one of the four horsewomen is going to bury her. It's just a question of who. There's my answer. And it doesn't make anybody look good in, at the end of the day. And it, it You're just, talking about the end of the day. We're still at we're still at noon, bro. Well, it's so. 8.30 p.m. And we've already lost our WWE title match. So there. I, I'm not a fucking fan of it, honestly. I, I think it was fucking ridiculous. And I believe that... We're, you're already got a paltry r- roster as it is. You're trying to make a new star in Bel Air. It absolutely had to be. You did her no favors here. You did no favors to anybody in the ring. I'm just going to leave it at that. You're on, bro. Okay, whatever. <sighs> Extreme Rules match. For the, the universal. Case, the only yeah. actual Extreme Rules match. Roman out. Oh. Out. Oh. Roman Reigns defends against the Demon, Ben Balor. 19 minutes and 45 seconds. Can't give us four stars. I, I gave it three and a half. Um, it was a really good match, marred by a horrible finish. What's your problem with the finish? Oh, fuck off. Fuck you, you dumb fuck. <laughs> you fucking smirk at me, you asshole. <laughs> You fucking goddamn motherfucking pieces of shit. You fucking think you're going to take a fucking supernatural fucking finish and try and push it past Sleazy over here. You're fucking wrong. What in the motherfuck was this? Okay, so he gets speared through the barricade and then the demon's heartbeat beats up in front of him and makes his music start and that's good okay, wait, 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 wait. problem with that isn't he already the demon yes okay so why did they do that who the fuck knows he it became the demon so demon better if that thing popped up he started popping up then out of nowhere Fog, and then Bray Wyatt shows up. That would have been fucking amazing. That would have been like, holy shit, that's a payoff. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a payoff. But no, we fired Wyndham Rotunda. Fuck you guys. So, then... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. He, there's more. He fucking comes back to life like he got... Like he's a a, a final like boss he, and like got his... Yo shocked him. Yeah. The perfect, perfect, and does a shotgun drop kick to Reigns that puts him through a table. What? And then throws him in the ring. He takes forever. Now keep in mind the ring is dark. It's red. There's mist coming from everywhere. Okay, so you can't even see him go up to the rope. Okay, to the top rope. Roman's lying dead in the ring. He gets up to the top rope and the rope breaks, comes off the turnbuckle. Obviously a planned spot, but that's enough for the demon Balor to lose his scary music and the lights and him to fall over and go, oh, now I'm just 
fin again, which is long enough for Reigns to come out of nowhere and Spearman win. Go fuck yourself. The match was good up to that point. It was, it went from nearly a four star match down to a two star match for that simple reason alone. That, that two minute segment. Go fuck yourself. This, the show was doing not terrible up to that point. And it make Reigns win look like a fluke. Because it was a fluke. Every, he beat off, uh, okay, phrasing, um, he took care of three guys because earlier on the Usos did show up and it, Baylor took care of them really easily. Like they're fucking nothing. The WWE SmackDown tag team champions, I might add, took them out like they're nothing. Wait, there's AEW SmackDown tag team champions? WWE SmackDown. Yeah. But the thing is, is that. Other AEW SmackDown tag team champions? No. No. So you don't have to put WWE SmackDown tag team champions. All you have to do is put SmackDown tag team champions. Lawyered. Anyway. The fuck is wrong with you, you fucking god? I'm just correcting your, your pedantic American. motherfucking bullshit. I was I'm pointing. Your American. American. I was. Making the point that we were on a WWE show doing this garbage booking. Okay? So the whole time we were covering a different promotion? No, I was making the point that this garbage booking didn't happen in AEW. It happened in WWE. Again, we're recovering another show that I didn't know about. Like, of course we're coming a WWE show. It's WWE Extreme Rules. So why would we shift mid review to Dynamite? I don't know they had more fans. Yeah, but they didn't make as much money on ticket sales. No, that's not true. They didn't make as much money according to what metric you want to play with. What the actual money or the Dave Meltzer reporting? The Dave Meltzer reporting, of course. Obviously. Dave Meltzer reporting says it was a million dollar gate, which is one hundred percent false. Let's see here. Um. Now, got let let's finish this because I do want to I I do want to talk about the the show as a whole, but I do also want to talk about the Arthur Ashe Stadium show. Overall, the show was pretty goddamn good. I think it was one of the okay. So it actually might be true. Fifty dollars a ticket. It might be true. Is that average? Yeah, twenty thousand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that might be that. Okay, that might be true then. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it is, was a million dollar gate. So that makes sense. Yeah. Good for AEW then. But still, it didn't make as much money. Yeah, because they don't have the rights deals. Obviously. Rights deals, ad revenue on Peacock, the Peacock deal. The Peacock deal on its own dwarfs the, whatever the AEW actual, is going to do. The actual eight pay-per-view by Yeah. Shock of shocks. The company with 50 years of experience. Hey, don't the- tell that. Don't tell that to AEW fans, man. I'm just saying. Don't put logic Name in a logical co- situation. I will I will defend AEW in this respect. Name a company that's made a million dollars at the gate for an indie wrestling company. I'll wait. They're not, indie re- they're not an indie wrestling company. Okay. Name a company in their second year. How about this? And I will give AEW this. WCW never had a million dollar gate. Right. ECW didn't. Ring of Honor never did. Impact Hell no. didn't. Hell no. New Japan might have with the well. Oh, the, Wrestle Kingdom, the, maybe. Yeah, the the Crook and Hall shows, Tokyo Dome shows. Yeah, they probably they probably did have million dollar gates. But outside of them, I can't think of another company outside of WWE that's done a million dollar gate. No, so I, yeah, the, they 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 give them credit. And I'm they just, certainly didn't I, do it well, after the third year of them being in business. Oh, no, right. No, so. no. I, and I'm good with that. I'm just saying that you have to. Yes, they're doing great and I'm all for it. But don't get into a fight with AEW fans about logic. That's all I'm saying. Well, the, I'm saying. there's there's a lot of um, I don't know. There's there's enough people out there that just want to disparage AEW because they're not fans of AEW for some reason. Well, there's also a lot of AEW fans out there dispersed WWE who are because they're WWE not fans. yeah because they're not so <laughs> they're standing for AEW I get it but 
you're also looking at. Well, it these are also the same people who watch WWE, also. So I mean, I mean we watch both. We preach about both journalists. of them. We yeah. ain't no wrestling journalists. We ain't no wrestling journalists. Yes. I will say this, though. We bitch about both of them equally. Yes. Relatively equally. Yes. Lately. So let's not bitch about this show, though. So besides the end of the show. It was good. And for, for a show that we were both like, <sighs> it was a really, really, really good show. I dare say it was probably the th- second or third best show this year of WWE's. Of, of yeah. WWE's main shows. It was great. Yeah, so, like, our worst match was what? The Triple Threat. Triple Threat, followed by the, for me, the, the main event. But even still, that's a two-star match, two-and-a-half-star match on a show full of three-star match pluses. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's pretty goddamn good. Usually you get a stinker or two. We didn't even really have that much of a stinker, so. No. And the only reason that Triple Threat match was bad was because of all the botches. Yeah, and sometimes people have an off night. And, yeah, and I've said I've said this somewhere before. in there is a foundation of probably a good match. Yeah, we'll look at the stars though. I mean, there's 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 two former WWE champions in there with Damian Priest. Yeah. So. Okay, let's do news and rumors. I have a decent amount. Well, you're I have a decent. I'm an okay amount. Uh, let's talk about Fox and Dirty's relationship. Apparently, there was a meeting. I have two screenshots worth of notes here. Holy shit. Uh, in a report today by Fightful Select, how WWE Chairman and CEO Bissick Man and President and CRO Nick Khan met with Fox Sports COO um, Eric Shanks. Shanky, baby. And uh, FS head of production Brad Zag- Ziegler. Zag- Zagger? Zagger? Oh, that's where SummerSlam. Dolph's brother was, right? I doubt it. Uh, the night before SummerSlam back in August. Okay. It was noted that a dinner between the two sides at the, at the Wayne Inn in Las Vegas. Okay. Before it lasted four hours and was said to be productive from WV's end. Uh, McMahon and Con reportedly decided to set on another move to further appease Fox management as there was an episode of Raw that's been discussed for the Staples Center in LA and with Fox Sports being located out of LA, Conor McMahon reportedly quickly killed the idea and made the decision to instead have the first post-pandemic delay in Los Angeles being an episode of SmackDown on December 10th. WWE is likely to confirm that soon. With WWE being two years into the mega fight deal with Fox and still going strong, uh, Fightful was told back in the summer that the relationship with the two sides were strained. Strained. A Fox source admitted that WWE viewership was disappointing in comparison to expectations, but they were quick to know that due to the nature of the Corona-19 pandemic, it was hard. It was still hard to gauge where these numbers would level out. And then it's impossible to predict what happened in 2020 at the time the deal was reached and when the series began on Fox. While the disappointing numbers were discussed, both Fox and WWE have pointed out they have to they have the most watched wrestling TV show in the world. I don't know if that's true or not. Top <clears> three. <throat> the same FX source noted same FX, sorry. Lana <laughs> <laughs> The same Fox source noted how hearing about Fox owner Rupert Murdoch likely be portrayed in a less than flattering way and the upcoming scripted Vince McMahon series, the United States versus Vince McMahon, was a childish, childish move that will not help the relationship between the two companies at all. What? Is, is WWE even producing that? I don't think so. Okay. They had Murdoch their finger met, in it, but I don't think they're actually producing it. Right. Murdoch personally met with Stephanie McMahon and Triple H and other WWE execs in May 2018 and said Fox would welcome them as they were after it was said USA was embarrassed and ashamed of WWE programming. That I call bullshit on. Is that they're embarrassed. This is right before their TV deal. If they're embarrassed a year before their TV deal. So they're embarrassed and ashamed why they sign them to why did NBC Universal sign them to not one, but two billion dollar TV deals. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's my question. So that's dumb. I got a little bit more. Okay. But go ahead. No, go ahead. go ahead. Okay. It was noted that Vince had had one conversation with Murdoch in recent months, but that subject reportedly was not 
breached. Um, sources at WWE noted that the concern was not raised to them and that the relationship between the McMahon and Murdoch family is one of great respect. Okay, Tony Soprano. Yeah. Uh, it was reported earlier this summer how Fox officially were not happy with SmackDown content being used to promote WWE events on Peacock as this is a competitor of their own streaming service. Uh, Fightful notes how another Fox Sports responded to great concerning knowledge that the network has not been over the moon about constantly promoting another network streaming service with WWE pay-per-views airing on Peacock, but WWE and Fox sources have said it's not, not been an issue. And actually, what I'm about to say actually is in the next paragraph. This is the last one. Fox and WWE pointed to the fact that WWE, WWE names were heavily prone on Fox, Fox Sports, and other broadcasts to build up SummerSlam, which was prime programming, let's say, for Fox. It was also noted that something man appeared on Fox News, Fox and Friends, while Charlotte Flair appeared on FS1's The Herd. A WWE source indicated that those at Fox that wanted the pay-per-view content, they could have, if they wanted the pay-per-view content, they could have paid the premium fee that Peacock did. So that's why I was just like, okay, so don't bitch about it if you're not paying for it. Okay, so let, where did this meeting happen? Apparently before SummerSlam, there was a meeting. But where? Las Vegas. Yeah, but you said where specifically? Some... The W Y N N the Wayne Wayne Wine oh the win win so the motherfuckers went to a casino two miles up the road I I don't believe that I really don't believe that I call bullshit on all of this somebody's making shit up because there's no fucking way that they would now for people who don't know where Allegiant Stadium is and all and Vegas in general. So Allegiant Stadium is at the very south end of the strip. It's near Mandalay Bay. It's like behind Mandalay Bay. And like right next to the airport. Okay? The wind is about two thirds of the way up the strip. It's probably one of the last major casinos before you go off strip. Why the fuck would they go all the way to the win for this? It's a meeting. Who says that their hotel wasn't near it? There are literally millions of hotels in Vegas. And you're going to tell me that they went to the win? I've only been there once when I'm 16. So I don't know. Literally, they could have gone anywhere else. I find it. That's where Murdoch wanted to go gamble. I don't fucking know. We weren't there. Speaking okay. of bullshit, remember how last was the last week I reported how Meltzer uh, was the last week or was it in the chat that Meltzer lied about like a thousand fans or so left Raw during the last yeah. segment, even though it was a live. It was a live show that everyone fucking show. Yeah. Well, my one of my girls, one of my bays, Alexa Bliss. Took to Twitter and called out FDR. Fuck Dave Meltzer. FT. What the fuck FTR? What? Why do we fuck FTR? Is a tag team. Oh, but yes, fuck Dave Meltzer. Old report he made about Raw, mm-hmm. where they said that a group of fifteen hundred fans left the arena. Bliss took <laughs> took to Twitter and said, "Sorry, Meltzer, or whoever you are, you got." You can't get your cloud off our segment. Move on. Peace sign. Middle finger emoji. Uh, stop, hashtag stop lying. Hashtag literally didn't happen. Hashtag you're embarrassing yourself. Multiple fans in attendance has also dismissed this report. While Brian Alvarez. Who, by the way, is his co-host. Noted that the number of fans walking out wasn't 1,500. It was closer to or fifty. It was closer to 700. So which, which fans, is it? Which fans literally said, you still would notice that, you dumb fuck. Well, no, he went from... It didn't happen. He went from 1,000 to 1,500 to only 700. Yes. So did he have like little, one of those little clickers that went, oh, there's another fan leaving. There's another fan leaving. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Holy shit, they're all going. I need to get a better clicker. You fucking journalist. Hey, he's a piece of shit. 
Why do we even give him the credence on the show? I really don't. This is the best. This is the best. It's, 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 it's still it, we're giving him fucking airtime. Well, doesn't that's deserve it. that's where the news and the rumors come in, and he's the main guy with the bullshit. So we we, we got it. He's the main so, guy with the bullshit. So according to fuck Dave Meltzer, WWE has contacted at and Stadium in regards to holding uh, WrestleMania for two nights. That is still under consideration but not a done deal. One idea WWE approached the venue was to hold WrestleMania that Sunday and then the post-Raw on Monday, both with a 40,000-seat setup. I call bullshit on that. They're going to want to fill that fucking stadium up. Yeah. There's no they reason not t- to. It's fucking Texas. Yeah. They also talked about possibly doing the two-day event on Saturday and Sunday. Duh. While looking into planning security and surgeons insurance cost reduction length of two days of members to one event in our location. Listen, so secure the cost of the production will be literally the same. It'll be nothing. So if you have a setup in an arena, the cost of the production will literally only be if, if I know if, I doubt it, if I'm right, but would it only be, so if you do a two day event, it would only be technically you have everything set up for that second night. You just got to flip the switch on, right? It's a little bit more than that, but yeah, because there are different people could be coming out. So that means different pyro that could be different okay. uh, lights, but also the labor of just the people being around. That's true. Is enough. And um, while you're paying people for setup, you're not paying people to break down that first night. You are paying people to break down the second night. Um, the WrestleMania 38 go home edition of SmackDown can't be held at the American Airlines Center in Dallas because the Dallas Mavericks play a game there. Uh, the SmackDown before WrestleMania is sometimes taped ahead of time for travel legions, but noted that Fox may want to do the show live. WWE also has looked into the Gerald Ford Stadium on the campus of SMU as a possible host for SmackDown and Raw because okay. they expect so many tourists in town for the weekend. Gerald Ford Stadium holds 32,000 people. Okay, so that's at Texas AMM, you said? SMU. 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 Okay. I'm, I'm not familiar. Method- so. Southern Methodist University. Southern Methodist University. Okay. Wow, that place is big. Holy shit. Um, For a college campus, 32,000 is nothing. Yeah. Well, yeah, <sighs> but I mean, I'm just right. looking at the entire campus, not just the. Oh, arena. yeah. That, that's pretty fucking big. <coughs> but yeah. Okay. They're definitely going to hold it Saturday, Sunday. And hell, they can use, if they wanted to, that fucking convention center where they held NXT Dallas the first time for a Raw SmackDown if they wanted to. Like, it's a smaller arena, but whatever. Um, Do you think that they're going to be playing a lot more Double Up Catch Up because it is Texas? Double Up Catch Up? Yeah, in terms of getting more as many people into shows as possible. Like, rather than... like. They'll take the chance on taking a 30,000 seat arena with the possibility of it not selling out because they haven't been touring. They haven't been, you know, going to big arenas. I think if they can't do, they could do the Raw in American Airlines Center, just not the SmackDown. Right. Well, if you're already going to set up for, and there's no college football games there because it's in April. So if you're going to set up there, you might as well hold Raw and SmackDown there. And if you're still going to do takeovers, do fucking takeover there, too. Um, I mean, I think they're going to do takeover wherever and, they're going to do the, the uh, what is it, the fucking I, WrestleCon, but WWE's version. Access. Access, thank you. Which was also at the convention center. Yeah, so I would say. If, if they're doing that again this year. Yeah. This coming year. But also at the same time, the Raws after WrestleMania normally the best Raws, so I think it's actually a good decision because I think they'll sell. Those tickets will sell. I don't know about the SmackDown because the SmackDown is mostly going to be just talking. They don't want their wrestlers to get hurt. There'll well, be some matches, obviously. They're going to be the Andre the Giant Battle Royal that no one cared yeah. about. So, I mean, but their Raw, I think, will sell tickets. Mm-hmm. So I agree. And there's also Globe Life Park in Arlington they could go to which is right down the road. There's the new MLB park, which I don't think they'll go to because there might be games there. Well, Globe Life Park 
got renovated for an XFL team. So, um, what about? Uh, oh no, that's open air. What? Uh, the Maverick Stadium. No, that's the American Airlines Center. No, 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 no. Uh, it's it's um, University of Texas's place. The, oh, that's in Austin. No, it's it's in Arlington. It's University. at the, University of Texas at Arlington. They, oh, oh, I don't, I don't know what their stadium is. Yeah, it's not really a stadium. It's an open air thing. It's basically a football field with a bunch of stands around it. I thought it was more than that. Okay, what what's this? What's it called? It's called Maverick Stadium. Oh. Oh, son of a bitch. It's it's not going to be something. It, it only holds 12.5, 12, and it's open air. It's not even a real stadium. Well, the open... Well, Kiro Ford Stadium is an open air stadium. Yeah, but we're... We're talking about I a see, high school football field here. It's not really a fucking... It's a college. But it's yeah. A, yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. I thought it was more than that, but it's not. Okay, so WWE may be holding a uh, major pay-per-view in the UK next year. Oh, you know, 30 years after they had a major pay-per-view there? Oh, yeah. But apparently it's not supposed to be till September. Yeah. Yeah. A source has informed, what culture of all people? What the fuck? <laughs> what culture wrestling? That WWE currently has plans to run a major pay-per-view in the UK next September. Not just that, but Vince McMahon's sports entertainment juggernaut is looking to take the stadium show to make this a stadium show with target and attendance in the range of 90,000 people. Okay, whatever. So, Wembley Stadium, and it'll probably be SummerSlam. Because it's 30 years after fucking 92. SummerSlam. Yeah. That was also in the old Wembley Stadium. Right. So, I, I, O2's not big enough. No, Wembley Stadium. Yeah, it it can only be Wembley. There there is no other stadium out it's there. It's Wembley right? Stadium. Yeah. Um so TLC, this is all pay per view related. TLC is a December pay per view. It was scheduled for it was announced for December second in Chicago. Now the date was moved to December nineteenth. And on December nineteenth, <clears throat> WB has a super show in Des Moines, Iowa on that date. So is TLC going to be in Des Moines, Iowa? Sure, why not? Cool. Um, uh, I will say gear? this. Oh, God. Go ahead. Wait a second. They do have Emirates Stadium in London, which is Arsenal's football. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what that is. What's that? It's soccer. Only assholes call it soccer. Um, I called it well, football. I dumped it down for you, you fuck. <laughs> That's a joke from the league. If you don't ever watch the league, like Sleazy has it because he doesn't like Taco, even though he likes the actor who plays Taco because he's the same fucking character, but whatever. John Lejoie is amazing. I don't like the league. I don't know why. Taco's fucking awesome. Password is Taco. Password's not Taco. See, you get it. You know. Uh, Only because I know your Wi-Fi password. That's not my password. Yes, I know. It was the name of your Wi-Fi, though. Yeah. <laughs> For many years. Um, full gear will be at uh, the Target Center in Minneapolis, but that was originally scheduled for St. Louis. Okay. So weird. Speaking of St. Louis, it was announced that the Royal Rumble will be on Saturday, January 29th, at the Dome at America Center in St. Louis. Why? Because. What's going on the 30th? Um... AFC and NFC title games. Oh, yeah, that's right, because everything got pushed down a week. Yep. Oh, I'm thinking, shit. like, wait a minute, and then yeah. the week after that's the uh, off week. And then, and then the, the other that's after that. So I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. I was thinking that, too. I'm like, wait, oh, okay. That makes sense. Um, Rick Flair was pulled from the New York City Comic Con, and Tommy Dreamer was pulled from the Busted Open Radio Show. Okay. Tim McCallahan broke his ankle, tibia, and fibia in an impact taping. I know. <laughs> Guess who was coming to both two CW nights? The two CW champion, Sammy Callahan. And he'll be out till mid-2022. Yeah, he's fucked for a while. Um, so that Jake means Robert, that- go ahead. I'm trying to blow through these and I'm running along. Uh, yeah. Jake Roberts had foot surgery to have pins inserted in his toes. Ow. Yeah. Um, Primetime Brian Lee announced 
for the big event convention in November. Is this sad that I thought he was dead? Yeah. <laughs> I honestly thought he was dead. Um, I, I, wrong Brian. Brian Clark? Yeah. No, because Brian Clark is in jail. Wait, which Brian is dead then? One of the three. Brian Adams. Brian Adams is dead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one's dead. One's in jail. And one's still working. Pick one. Oh, yeah. So, actually, to go back to the Fox News, Fox sources have said in recent months that they do like the effort that WWE has made while trying to stack the roster for SmackDown. In other words, it's all bullshit. Yeah. Um, WWE and MGM are partnering for an American Gladiators reboot. Um, I got a little bit of tidbits of information of that. I don't know how true it is, so take it with a grain of salt. But what I've heard is that wrestlers would be gladiators. And that, my friends, is the worst possible thing to happen. What better way to nerf your talent than to make them look like idiots in front of normal, non-wrestling competitors? You know why they're doing this, right? So they can see which athletes the best so they can sign them? Come on. How, how do you think Rico Come Constantino on. got signed? Come on, bro. You know why they're doing it. They don't need to do that, though. They, they don't, don't need to. They don't but need they to do make that. Money off, they can make money off the TV show and try to find fucking talent. Yeah, and they don't need to nerf their own fucking ro- workers to do it. Nerf like do it. Yeah, I know. They <laughs> just need to. They just need to. They don't need not to use fucking the fucking workers. I know. You fucking Apparently. idiots. Apparently, Grand Metal League has requested his release, but no word out if it was been granted or not. No one cares about Grand Metal League. That, that's true. Not not uh, in WWE, at least. Billy Graham was hospitalized last week uh, with a severe heart condition. He is home now. Good. Um, so, AEW can't use the King of Hearts name. Okay. Why? Because... You don't... Go ahead. Why, because Martha owns it or because WWE owns it? Neither. Okay. Melissa Joan Hart and her husband has a clothing line called the King of Hearts. <laughs> Clarissa, fuck you. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. What a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's a witch with a capital B. So Dynamite is officially moving to TBS starting January 5th due to TNT airing Wednesday Night Hockey. That wasn't a surprise. Oh, so they're, they're, of- they're moving ahead. to Tuesday? Or are they just no, moving? Wednesday. I think they're moving. Wait. Well, let's figure this out. When? Well, November, January 5th is a Wednesday. So they're staying on Wednesdays. For a second, I thought we were going to have yeah. NXT yep. 2.0. So, yeah. yeah, they are staying on a Wednesday. Um, last bit of information. Uh, AEW was making a TBS championship for the women's division. We talked about this last night. Um... I'm against it right now, right now, only because your newer company wasn't really established the division all that much. Mm-hmm. So why water it down by adding another championship? Because now you're, to me, you're just making your women's title not that credible. You kind of want to establish that before you yep. make a secondary title. I don't think it's I'm a bad not, idea. I'm not against the women having it. I'm just saying you got to establish that division more before they... You should get it. I, I think it's a not right now. Right. Um, I do have one bit of news that you actually didn't say. Mm-hmm. So, are you guys a fan of NXT 2.0? Yeah? No? I have not watched a single episode. Since the... the I've been well, working Tuesdays. Yeah, that's right. So, you don't so, watch them at all. So, um... um <laughs> so, there's a new gimmick in town. Uh, featuring okay. my favorite wrestler, former Excite, two-time Excite champion, Joe Gacy, um, that debuted a new gimmick against Cameron Grimes. That was a very woke gimmick, for lack of a better term. He came out and said that, you know, the ring is a safe place and blah, 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 blah. And it was, it was an appealing, funny jab to the progressive left. Holy shit! Did the shit hit the fan? 
Fox News picked it up. Everyone and their brother picked it up. Ding, 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 ding. Fox News. Fox News was the big one, but so, everyone picked it up. So well, on the right side, I should say. Right. Because New York Post picked it up too. So, and I said to you when you told me that, I go, you know what I would do? I would start bashing Fox News. Then I go, wait a minute. You can't do that. No. Because SmackDown was on Fox. But you could have, <laughs> but you could have bashed New York Post, who has no, no skin in either game. But the reality is that they, they did a whole fucking bit about it. It was over. They put it on YouTube. The YouTube video is gone. All the tweets regarding it, gone. Joe Gacy put up uh, uh, his old smiley face gimmick mm-hmm. picture on his uh, Twitter, and they basically expunged this entire thing. It's gone. Like, gone, gone. And my question to you is, what the fuck? I mean, what yeah. do you believe about that? Um... <sighs> It's a wrestling gimmick, bro. If NCIS came out with a character like that, nobody bats an eye. But since wrestling does it, oh, blah, blah, blah. And here's the funny part about it. The people who run WWE are Republicans. Yeah. So it's not, they were kind of making fun of themselves in a sense. <laughs> not really making fun of themselves, but you know what I mean. But like, I mean, it's a little too on the nose. Let's just put it that right. way. It was, but at the same time, he's a character on a TV show. Right. And that's the thing, is that at, at the end of the day, it's it's whatever. You should have let it at least worked its way through. Now you've got fucking damaged goods here. And poor fucking Joe Gacy is sitting yeah. here in the middle of this fucking shit storm. Now he's got to sit here, and I, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I know that Joe is sweating right now. He's worked his ass off to get to this spot. He has worked his, you know, every single contact. He was part of Evolve solely because he wanted to be signed by WWE. He was as straight-laced as possible to, to get that job. And now, through zero fault of his own, could be sitting back in the Indies in weeks because of this. Or just bury down the roster so far deep that eventually no one will care and release him. Yep. And it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And it's not even WWE's fault. It's it's nobody's fault on WWE's end. It's nobody's fault on Joe's. Nope. Creative. No. It's ridiculous. It's a character. It's one thing if he was doing Akeem the African Dream. Right now in this culture, it would be ridiculous if he was an Iraqi sympathizer. It would be ridiculous if he was dressed up as a cop, beaten up on the other wrestlers. It would be stupid if he was, uh, um, oh, I don't know, Muhammad Hassan. Come on, you guys. Seriously. You guys are yeah. so, they're so worried about losing their golden gooses. Or golden geese. Golden gooses? Really? You fucking idiot. America! America! Your golden geese of your huge PG era uh, brand deals and stuff like that. Meanwhile, we're going to Saudi next month! But no, this is the thing that you decide to, you know what, maybe we should pull back on that. You fucking assholes. If they did not have a deal with Fox, they wouldn't care. I think if... I 100% don't think they would have cared if Fox was not part of that deal. If they had had Disney behind them, I don't think they'd care. But since Fox News ran with it and was being stupid with it. I don't know. Because if you you look at the actual actual thing, the actual article, it wasn't that bad. It was just them saying that it happened. It wasn't them bashing it. Oh. They liked it. Oh, then why they get rid of it? Exactly. Oh, then that is WWE's fault. It got him press. He could have been the biggest star in NXT because of that. So that is WWE's fault then. The only well, the only fault it is is that once again they didn't want to be pegged 
in the corner that could cost them ad revenue. They could cause them problems with their major deals. Yep. It had nothing to do with exactly what it was. It had everything to do about fucking money, as always. Yep. And now a guy who spent his entire life getting to this point is now potentially having a big problem. Mm-hmm. And it pisses me off, but... Um, did you want to just quickly discuss what we talked about before we went on air? Uh, let's save it for another show. Okay. Um, we, we have a little, we'll, we'll throw it out there. Um, do, do we have a topic ne- next week? Uh, I think we're good. So we'll, we'll just throw this topic out then. Um, so one of the things, and you know, we're, we're fucking marks that jump on Twitter here and there. Um, and I make fun of the fact that I get, you know, retweeted by Tyler Breeze because I like to name drop. Um, I found this. Inter- You're best friends with Vince Russo, bro. I know, right? That's weird. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, Bin Hameen is Vince Russo's fucking uh, stooge, okay? That's all I have to say about that. So I don't. I kind of know who Sean Donovan is. Not 100%. Um, Name sounds familiar. Yeah. he He's a journeyman wrestler. But he sent a tweet out that said, Dear indie workers, don't discuss your booking fee pay with anyone else except the promoters you deal with. Everyone is paid differently for many reasons. It can also cause disagreements, disputes with your peers and promoters. Handle your business in silence. Sincerely, Sean Donovan. What I propose to both, both Fat Man and to our multitude of fan yes. and tweet us at sleazy fat man tweet either one of us at tbs sleazy or tws fat man or even or hit us up on the facebook page sleazy and the fat man tell me your opinions on this i'm very interested to hear what you guys think now there's a lot of people on our 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 fan pages and stuff like that some of them are workers some of them are just fans some of them for some reason, just like to listen to our, us. our work fans, our work fans that I pay a lot of money for, by the way, <clears throat> um, let us know how you feel about that. I I'm, I'm very interested to hear from you guys because I'm pretty sure fat man and I are actually going to disagree on this. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, check us out. Um, and as always, we'll get into our normal plugs. You know, you can find us on Instagram and, and all aforementioned tweet, twitters, tweeters, tweet, handles the, i don't know the twatters the twatters um one of these days i'll actually get us on tiktok but i don't know when that's going to be yeah uh, that's i ain't get on tiktok yeah well you know that's how it goes um obviously you can find us wherever you get your wonderful podcast every saturday morning at 8 a.m um and you can find us and everybody else on the gear network at GearNetwork.com. Um, spoiler, folks, there might be a new shirt coming out soon. <gasps> Just throwing that out there. You never know. Maybe it'll be done in time for our 10th anniversary show. <laughs> Don't we have to have a 9th anniversary show first? Yeah, but I'm at least. Oh, speaking of that, reasonably... please, an idea. Do you have an announcement about our 9th anniversary show? Oh, yes, yes. In a month. We will announce it in a month. That it's going to be really big. It's going to be really fun. It's something <clears throat> we've done before, but we haven't done in a while. Actually, we, I don't think we've ever done before. Didn't we do one? We were going to do one, and then the pandemic happened. Yes, yeah, but the pandemic happened. Yeah. So, spoiler as a hint. As a hint, if you have at for our multitude of fan who have actually listened to us throughout the whole ages. Yes. So, with all that said, for Sleazy. For the fat man. This is the wrestling show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Peace. Fuck Kenny Omega. Fuck Dave Meltzer. Fuck Nick Dage. Dage? Fuck Nick Gage. A hot dog is not a sandwich. And we're running out of fucking time. I love Sasha.
The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.